Lovely. Good afternoon and thank you for inviting us to speak. My name is Michelle and I'm the Head of Health and Wellbeing at Beamish Museum. I've been at Beamish for 15 years, originally starting in the collections team, collections access team, community participation, and now in the very fortunate position that we are a separate team. We are the health and wellbeing team. Our other colleague, Kat, is running the fort back at Beamish. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm Beth Marston, so I've worked at Beam for about a year and a half now. Um, previously, I worked in mental health services, so I come from a slightly different, different perspective. But yeah, um, so we're going to talk today about our project that we did, which is called Framing It Differently. So it was looking at mindful photography and using some of the space at the uh, <laughs> Next slide, please. So, for those of you that uh, haven't been to Beamish, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I don't need a show of hands. It's fine. Um, but it's a large open air museum in the northeast of England. So it's on a site of about three hundred and fifty acres, and over the, it's been opened as a museum for about fifty three years. In that time, buildings have been taken down brick by brick from around the northeast and rebuilt at Beamish. So we've got a recreated Edwardian town that featured in Downton Abbey and many Catherine Cookson's. We've got a pit village, we've got a Georgian area, we've got a 1940s farm and most recent development is the 1950s town at Beamish, which is where we are. Uh, so the museum tells the social and, in, and industrial history of the northeast of England and there's about five 450 members of staff and about 500 volunteers. So our team are based now in the, the 1950s town. Um, for the last over 10 years, we've been developing a unique program at the museum, um, supporting people affected by dementia, living with uh, dementia or cognitive impairments. And over the last few years, we've really broadened it out. And it's now we work with people with a whole range of mental health issues as well, people experiencing isolation. What we do at the museum is we make sure everything is unique. So it's not something that you could pick up and do in a community center. We're really lucky to have such a huge collection, huge space. So everything we do is inspired by the collections or the environment or the buildings. Um, so this project, the Framing It Differently, was something completely new, um, new for us. Um, and with Beth, it moved quite soon after you joined. So it was um, kind of a new, a new way of it. <laughs> yeah. So what did we expect from the project? Um, so my first aim was to really try and incorporate some mindful practice. So just trying to think of things in a slightly different way and give people that space to really enjoy the environment that they were in. Um, we also really wanted to encourage people to try something that they hadn't before. A lot of the participants that came didn't use their phones to even take photos with. So it was really about them trying something that they hadn't really experienced before. Um, we wanted to build a safe and supportive environment. So that's kind of the most important thing that we try and do in any group that we run is to make people feel like they're in a space that they know, they're with people that they know, and it'll be the same people every week, and just to make them feel secure when they're coming to the sessions. Um, and also a lot of people that we've worked with have spoken to us about how they can feel quite isolated, especially after a diagnosis. Um, so we really just wanted people to be able to make those connections with each other and get to know people in the local community that maybe they wouldn't <laughs> normally encounter. Um, we also wanted, as Michelle said, we've got 350 acres of land, so it's a huge, huge site and a lot of it isn't explored. Or if people do come and take photos, they take things like the Edwardian town or a picture of a tram or those things that are associated with with the museum, so we really wanted people to explore the areas that they wouldn't normally. Um, and also people that wouldn't maybe normally access the museum. Um, it's often seen as somewhere that you'd come with family or children or things like that. So some of the participants had either recently moved to the area or hadn't been for about 20 or 30 years and the space had completely changed in that time. So it was really good to welcome people who hadn't really, hadn't really been there for a long time. 
Um, so this is the activity. These are just a few photos of us as we were out and about. And oh, I should also say that all the photos in the presentation were taken by participants for the group. So all of them were taken by the people who were part of it. Um, so we have met over 12 weeks. Um, so we met once a week and we just explored different areas of the museum. So a lot of the places were spaces that people maybe wouldn't have gone to as much. Um, and we were really just taking the time to notice the changes within the seasons. So we ran the group from March to July. So we saw all of the change from spring into summer. So it was a really, really lovely time to do the project. Um, there was five participants in one carer who came each week. Um, and we tried to incorporate different activities in so that we could incorporate the museum's collections and some of the historic history, <laughs> historic history, uh, yeah, of the things that we have within it. So we did tintype photography workshops, so to learn about the history of photography and also cinetype printing. And um, so that was the first form of image printing and we used, oh, I've got some pictures here. Yes. <laughs> so these were our co convict tintype photos at the start. And then these were some images of um, the uh, cinetype printing that we did. So we went out and hand picked all the flowers and pressed them ourselves. So then we could do um, do the printing all together. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the way, as people have mentioned, um, the, the unreliable British weather meant that we always had to have a backup plan if we couldn't just work outside. So we planned into the, the program having some sessions that could be done inside. So one week we had a local poet who came um, to talk to the group and together they created um, lovely poetry, creative writing around some of the images that they'd taken pictures of around childhood memories and the outdoors and the senses. Um, we also worked with Ian Beasley, who I know has worked on some of the other projects. And um, he was in the, the spirit of looking for things that people just walk past. We started talking about dandelions and how beautiful they are and how they represent the sun and the moon and the stars. We looked at them on a light box. And from that, the, we, the whole group started a discussion about a dandelion being an analogy for us as people and the dandelion seeds are things that we pass on throughout our lives and one man said well I don't have any seeds because I've got Alzheimer's but we discussed it as a group and then he said oh but actually they're things that I'm passing on all the time to my family and my friends so that's where that beautiful image came from and then people started to write down on the dandelion seeds <coughs> things that they would like to pass on and that became part of the exhibition as well um, and then um, the picture at the bottom, as a group, we decided which um, images we wanted to put into the final exhibition. The exhibition was put in our, in our 1950s uh, community centre at the museum, so an area with a huge footfall. <laughs> so on a busy weekend, we would get maybe four or five thousand people at the museum. So um, lots and lots of people saw this exhibition. The group decided amongst themselves that they didn't want it to be really obvious as soon as you looked at the pictures, these were taken by people with dementia. They wanted the images to be seen and appreciated for what they were. If you then you know, looked at the booklet, um, read a little bit more, you would see some of these people are living with dementia, but they didn't want that to be the main thing, a bit like, them as people, dementia isn't the one and the only thing about them. So to go along with the exhibition, um, we created these beautiful booklets. Um, we brought some along today if anyone wants to take them. So the group um, helped to co-produce this as well. Um, one couple as well were away for three weeks, and that's why there's some pictures from their holiday. They're from Mexico, not from Durham. <laughs> <laughs> but they really wanted to keep taking part in the exhibition, so they took pictures yeah, in Mexico. Um, we also printed these postcards, and visitors could uh, take these away with them as well. And Ian did um, a signed dandelion portrait uh, picture for every single participant so we presented them the director of the museum was there to formally open the exhibition all the senior leadership team were there it was really 
a really lovely exhibition. Um, testament to how popular it was. And this was something really new for Beamish. Usually you can't add to historical spaces like this, but we did it. Uh, I think we got away with it. It doesn't look particularly modern, <laughs> but it's now on permanent display at the entrance building in Belize. So thousands of people will see that when they arrive. Yeah. But, um, so how do we engage with people living with dementia? Um, because we've got an already established programme, we have quite a lot of community links. Um, so we talk to local occupational therapy teams, um, VCSE organisations such as the Alzheimer's Society and Age UK. Uh, people could self-refer in, so if people heard about it, then they were more than welcome to do that. And we also went through some of the waiting lists that we had for already established groups um, so that we could speak to them and see if they wanted to come along as well. We did find recruiting for this a little bit harder than I think we first expected. Um, so there was quite a few people that ended up joining after we'd started, but I think that's more of a word of mouth thing. And I think that's quite natural when you start something with something cheeky brand new. Um, so before the session, to try and make people feel as at ease as possible, um, we attempted to meet each participant before so that they understand what the group was going to be doing each week, what the kind of point of the project was. Um, we also gave them a week by week plan so that they could see what sessions were on and if there was things they were more keen to attend or not as keen to attend. Um, and then also at the start of each session, we met them at the entrance. So they didn't have to travel anywhere on site on their own. Um, and we could discuss what the plan for the day was so everyone kind of knew what to expect. Um, I should have said um, near the beginning, um, apologies, that as part of our health and wellbeing team, we run a weekly programme of activities at the museum. So we have at least one um, set session every day of the week. So we have walking groups, we have uh, music and movement groups, we have a um, men's group, which is specifically for men. They do um, woodwork DIY tasks around the museum. But on top of that, we also have community groups that can come uh, from care homes, hospices, all kinds of different groups. So every week we're running a varied uh, array of groups. So this was an additional one that we um, we ran last summer uh, for, for 12 weeks. Um, so what did we learn? Um, so as we said, this is something new. Every session that I've developed in the past has always been something unique using the collections. I think um, it was great to have a uh, kind of fresh blood <laughs> in the team um, with different experiences. I don't think that I could have done this um, just me, myself. It was definitely Beth's kind of creativity that led on this and, and me kind of making it work in the beamishness <laughs> of the beamish. Um, so yeah, some of the sessions um, had poor attendance. Not that people didn't want to come. This was quite a unique group for us in that most of the people living with um, a cognitive impairment or dementia were actually li living on their own. So there wasn't anybody with them in the same house to say, oh, it's Friday, it's Beamish today. So that's, and that's something that we haven't really come across before. Um, so to get around that, we, we like a challenge. Uh, working with Ian Beasley, the lovely Ian, every week he created a postcard based on the activity we'd done last week. And we posted it to them as a, uh, looking forward to seeing you next Friday at the entrance at Beamish at half past 10 um, and then our names and our phone number at which everyone said oh I look forward to receiving them uh, apart from one lady we got the number of our house wrong so yeah, her neighbour was good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she still turned up <laughs> that was um as somebody mentioned earlier about um, the project that you did here, because Beamish is so well known and people want to come to go to the bakery or the sweet shop, we, we had to, well, we made sure we incorporated that in, but also it's important to remind the group of the purpose. So some people from the beginning were taking photos, really enjoyed it, whereas other people, um, I think that was kind of lost along the way, which obviously we didn't force people, you must take pictures, <laughs> but also it, it wasn't about coming to Beamish or getting a loaf of bread and <laughs> riding on the tram. So, um, but yes, we made sure people got to see bits of Beamish that they wanted to as well. 
Um, as everybody's touched on today, always be flexible, expect the unexpected. We were talking to people in uh, the lunch break as well about one man in particular who um, was living on his own. Um, he got public transport, but one week, especially the bus driver was very unhelpful and actually didn't let him on the bus without his bus pass. So he went home and then that kind of just everything went downhill from there, which one little, so we are in, we have worked with the bus companies um, in the past around Beamish to make them more dementia friends as well. Um, and we do that for every single member of staff and volunteer at the museum as well. Um, and also um, because it was just two of us at the time in the team, we didn't have a huge capacity. This group would have loved to have done this, the group every week forever for a whole day and we just unfortunately didn't have the time with hindsight what we should have done is uh, ended it at lunchtime or ended it maybe it's three o'clock at the entrance building so people could stay on and have a cup of tea as a group but it didn't lead us to facilitate it and actually that would mean that the group got used to meeting on their own without us facilitating it um, so uh, we would look at the kind of the timings as well. We didn't have our lovely new 1950s house at the time. Whereas if we were to do it again, that's a space where people could stay for a bit longer. Um, um, so yeah, so this is just a little bit of the evaluation that we did as part of the team. Um, so this is based on like well-being scores. So you can see so some of them stay quite similar. One participant was a 10 out of 10, both times. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see, especially participant three, there was a massive jump in how, how it affected their well-being from being part of the group. Um, also, two of the participants are now um, volunteers within the museum. And um, one of them's keen if we were the project again to volunteer for me to run it. So that's been really amazing. Um, and then there are just a few quotes. Um, so we saw the flowers coming into bloom through the seasons. Even now, following the course, I'm noticing things I never noticed before. It was good getting outdoors. You were looking at different flowers and remembering different things from your childhood. Uh, uh, should we just point out that there's one where the well-being has gone down, but um, just to put that into context, uh, and we can't say for sure, but in context, that individual, there was a lot of things going on in his life at the time, and when he started in the group, he was, he hadn't even been to his doctors about his cognition. So over the 12 week period, he then went through a lot of assessments, a lot of difficult conversations with his son. And then before the end of the project, he was given a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. So I, I would imagine that that had an impact. Yeah. Uh, and then this was the image that Ian Beasley um, did, which Michelle was talking about before. So it was one of our final evaluation pieces, which the group and reflection, um, we got people to write on things that um, they that stuck out for them. And I thought it was interesting because they were quite similar to some of the, um, the group that said before. So things like belonging, um, sense of well-being, the beauty of nature, um, looking at things differently. So it was just really nice to have that as a final image for the group all together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what would we do uh, differently? I um, think um, a lot of our groups that we already run as part of the programme, we would describe as dementia inclusive. We don't tend to run many groups uh, that are just for people in with dementia. We make every group dementia in inclusive and dementia friendly. So if we were to run it again, I think we would uh, broaden it out because I think this is a lovely project and we benefited even though, if you imagine how busy our weeks were, actually a Friday was a really nice time to just slow down and appreciate the lovely place where we work. So we would um, open this out as a group for anybody really um, who came to our, who came to our programme. Um, 
I know weather's been mentioned a lot. I do feel it in the northeast we have even worse weather. <laughs> I don't know if it was just bad luck, but definitely March and April last year was unseasonably cold <laughs> slash Baltic in the northeast. Uh, wh where we are as well is particularly high up. So we would probably look at running it later on in the year. But some of the activities that we showed, you don't have to appreciate nature outside all the time. The cyanotypes that we did was a way of doing it inside as well. Um, we This might be something to do with our information that we passed on or also information being passed on and then on again to make, uh, make sure people understand kind of uh, what the group entails and we need to know their kind of mobility and access, access needs before the session but it, as you're all used to on the day you just you go with it and we're very good at making adaptions um, as well. Uh, we've mentioned about looking at the day time of the week because Fridays was the only day when we didn't have a set session at the time that's why we went for a Friday but actually it wasn't a uh, particularly a good day for many people. Um, and again, I think because it was funded during live and nature was obviously the, one of the main themes, but actually we found through discussions, it might be because of where we're based and the people that we work with, that actually the strongest link between the participants was the industrial history of the North East. So if we were to run this again, we would focus much more broadly on their kind of their juxtaposition between industrial history and nature um, that we've got on our doorstep. Um, and then what's next? Uh, so we're hopefully going to run this project again, spring and summer 2024, waiting till it's a bit warmer next year though, I think. Um, we're also looking at incorporating some of the activities into our already established groups. So such as the walking group, we can kind of spend that time thinking about that mindful practice whilst we're walking and noticing the changes in the seasons. Um, we're also working on a project with Northumbria University about creative ageing and using pottery. Um, and they're really keen to use the image of the dandelions to glaze onto pots and kind of the reasons behind that. And then finally, Ian Beasley's also uh, producing a book showing images from our project and also the one at the Coal Mining Museum. So we're going to incorporate that into a uh, exhibition again just before we start the new project. Brilliant. Thank you.